I'm sure we can all agree that the Redgrass task lamp is at the opposite end of the spectrum to what most hobbyists will be interested in spending on a lamp. And that's fine. I'll be the first to admit that this is not for every single miniature painter, and I've got no intention of trying to convince you that this is a must-buy. But it's only fair to validate this product for what it is and what it's achieved for the entire art industry. Because what it has done is astounding, and it also shows us that Redgrass are far wiser than just some snake oil salesmen who managed to convince people that we needed to buy their plastic tub as a wet palette rather than just use an old tub from home. So hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fauhammer Videos. And I want to start with a thanks to Redgrass Creative, Ni Redgrass Games, for sending me their R9 task lamp for creative people. This isn't just for miniature painters. Everything about this product can be summed up in one word. Quality. Everything about this product is quality. The packaging is quality, the installation is quality, the look and feel, quality. Every last little bit. A few people mentioned in my previous video comments that they're actually put off by the lamp because it clamps to the side of the desk rather than sitting on its own stand. But honestly, this is quite common for pretty much all large task lamps. I've never actually seen a large task lamp that's freestanding. But I'm sure Redgrass can probably fashion one as an optional extra if there's enough demand. It would need to be rather weighty though. There's a lot of weight in this lamp and you'd need extra in the stand to counterbalance the arm whilst it's fully outstretched. But personally, even if given the choice of a freestanding base, I wouldn't go with it. I much prefer the security of having this thing clamped to the side of my desk. Speaking of the clamp, it is robust and both sides are rubberized to avoid it biting into your worktop. And set up, well, it's a simple case of screwing this clamp to the side of your desk and then the lamp easily slots into the hole. And it's even got this little thumb screw to lock the lamp's rotation in place if you wish to do that. And the lamp has its power cable neatly running through the arm of the body, which is a really nice and attractive contrast in red to the black metal housing. The arm itself is split in half and its elbows have an internal tension coil rather than external springs. This is more akin to professional microphone boom arms than your typical task lamp. There are other lamps on the market with this type of elbow joint and those are far superior, sturdier and longer lasting than springs, but the other lamps that have these just look cheap. Once again, this is a high quality implementation that is far more professional than anything we've seen. Comparative to boom arms, half the cost goes into this mechanism alone. When it comes to the neck, I was happy to find that there's far more to this than what I saw when I got the live demonstration slash preview. This isn't a gooseneck joint. It makes sense because the lamp itself is rather weighty. And just like I've said in 3D printer reviews where the build plate affixes with a ball joint, they're weaker. But it does articulate both horizontally and vertically. I was worried you'd need to get this mounted exactly parallel over your painting area, but you can in fact angle the arm separately to the lamp. I was concerned about finding adequate placement originally when I sat down to paint, but having now used this for a few weeks, I love it. And it's easy to have it anywhere from right above my desk, lighting up my whole hobby space, to having it below my head height and closer to the actual mini. And just like Ninjon said in his video, it's really useful to be able to look through the gap in the two individual lamp arms whilst you're painting. And wherever you move it to, you can move it with ease, and it just stays there. And I have to say that painting with this lamp for hours on end, I've spent a few weeks with it now, is really comfortable on my eyes. My previous lights were way too powered, with two lamps being 2000 lumens each, it was almost bleaching my retinas. With this, I can paint for hours without any of that feeling of light fatigue that I've had with previous setups. And I will go on to a bit of the science as to why I think this is so comfortable for the eyes in a little bit, but let's get back to the functional parts of the lamp first. So as for the lamps themselves, I said there's two. And in lieu of having a gooseneck, this is where the individual arms can actually angle independently with a rotation axis of approximately 315 degrees, not that I can think of any reason why you'd ever want to face them upwards, but you can if you want. I'd normally have them both facing inwards towards the mini while painting, or flat when it's above my desk to light the whole area. 
and this is a real treat for taking photos because you can have one arm angled towards the mini and the other towards the backdrop. There's a little bit of shadow cast, but thanks to the optical lens, they aren't calling it a diffuser, but more on that in a mo, it's quite a soft shadow that's cast on the surface below. Without this lamp, I'd need two lamps to evenly light the model and a third lamp to brighten the backdrop. Now it's just point and shoot. And as for my YouTube videos, yeah, as I thought, I did have to adjust my camera placement from where it previously was, but I'm able to shoot much better with more evenly lit painting videos from this one lamp. And I'm not getting the flickering, which is typically associated with LED and energy saving bulbs, though you may need to adjust your camera's own frequency settings depending on your locale. I didn't need to. Operation wise, it's super simple. There's one button. One press will turn it on, another press will turn it off. It's easy to understand which will do what because it'll just make the light do the opposite of what its current state is. Brightness adjustment is using the same button, but instead of pressing it, you hold it. If it's on mid brightness, there's no clear way to know which way it will go, whether it'll get brighter or dimmer. But if it starts doing the opposite of what you want, then just let go and hold it again and it'll go the other way. Now, if I was to critique this light, the only thing I would say is that I'd prefer the brightness to be on a dial of some kind to control it. As a YouTuber, I'd like to mark it so I know what the brightness setting is best for a particular shot and to balance it with my camera so I can quickly return to that place on future shoots and different videos. But that's nitpicky and I can easily just read the histogram on my camera instead. It just means reaching over to it and I'm, I'm quite lazy. As for max brightness, well, it's not enough to cause my eyes to melt out my head, it's really comfortable, but it will still overexpose on my camera. And I've got some professional studio lights that don't brighten a model well enough for my liking. This one lamp solves that problem entirely. But the real value in this lamp is how it could change the face of the wider art industry. And that's because of its ability to output a 98 on the color rendering index. You see, it's not just color temperature that matters. We all know what warm light and cool light looks like on any given day. Outside, this can range from anywhere like five to 6,000 Kelvin. The importance of natural light is in its CRI. When I was first shown this lamp, I was told all about the color rendering index, and I met this with a bored and irritated eye roll. I wanna say sorry to Vivian from Redgrass, but as I stood there, I was just like, dude, show me the lamp but when he did show me the lamp and i actually saw it in action for the first time i quickly realized that i'd never seen this depth of color on my models before at least not without some sort of color correctness when post-processing model photos and it was afterwards that i did a little reading and i'm still no expert on cri but it's basically a measurement of how much the visible color spectrum is output from a source and how that light when reflected off objects can be accurately interpreted by the human eye. To give you a reference of scale, the sun has a CRI of 100. Typical in-home lighting can be anywhere from 50 to 80. It can be higher, but it's more commercial spaces and offices that push for 80 plus. If it's a high-end store or an office space aiming for the more energy enriching lights, it's around 90. For professional artist grade lighting, it's 95. This is 98. 98! I'm screaming this number at you like it means anything, and I felt the same when I was first told about it. I actually had to go and do a lot of reading to understand just how much of an amazing achievement this really is. Like, I've got $500 studio lights that isn't even capable of this. And to get this high, it's because the lamp is able to achieve a high R9 score on the color rendering index. You see, the CRI score is normally calculated by measuring the different wavelengths of color from a light source. Each wavelength range is given an R designation from 1 through 15, and their measured scores of 1 to 100 are averaged across these 15 values to achieve the CRI rating. But whilst every other range of 1 to 8 and 10 to 15 are given high scores, R9, which is strong red, can normally have a very low score, even in the low 10s. Lights in general are typically very poor at outputting a good R9, or red, but not the red grass task lamp. Hence the name, R9. 
Now, what this actually means is when you look at an object under this light, your eyes can pick up far more color variants than a lower rated lamp. And it really works. Unfortunately, like showing HDR video to someone who doesn't have a HDR display, you need to see this to see how it makes a difference. But it does. And for the professional hobbyist chasing that perfect blend, this gives you more of a chance of noticing any imperfections sooner. And especially when you look at colors in the red spectrum under this light, your eyes will see so much more vibrancy and depth and richness than you even knew was there. If you want to get an idea of how this makes a difference, find something in your house that's deep red, maybe even a model you've painted. Look at it under your room lights, then go outside and look at it under direct sunlight. That's the difference. That's what this lamp does. And they always say you should paint your models in natural light, but for many of us, we don't have a hobby area with a window. If we do, the window's normally facing us and lighting the model from the back, not above. This lamp is likely the closest you will come to a true artificial natural light. I struggled to find another task lamp online that would match the CRI we get here. The closest I got was listed as greater than 96. I did find a couple of bulbs at 98, but they were £50 each. So yes, it's expensive, but also yes, the product's worth its asking price because its innovation is far more than the basic functionality and the style of a prettier industrial looking lamp. But I do understand why many people watching this video can't justify the expense. Despite Redgrass's history as a solely miniature industry focused company, they really have branched out here because this, like the name says, is for the wider audience of creative people out there. It's not so much a hobby tool as it is a professional piece of equipment. This product reasonably and fairly caters for a much wider audience than us bunch of miniature painting nerds. But for those of you who only skimmed the video, feel free to note down in the comments why this lamp is overpriced and why I'm wrong. I wanna say thanks to you for watching and a super thanks to our patrons who are helping us generate more content like this. If you would like to get your name up in the credits and get some Discord benefits like well, your name up in the credits there, then please check out the Patreon link in the description below. Let me know what you think of this lamp anyway and why you won't buy it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Until next time, Fohammer out.